You know, there's nothing like cracking that, that cellophane and pulling that record out. It just smells great. Welcome to Buzz Mayhem Hour. Non-stop hardcore energy. I love the show, guys. You're awesome. Yeah. Unlike any other. With your host, John the Bod, a.k.a. The Bodfather. Man, this stuff rocks. The views and opinions of the guests do not necessarily reflect the views and opinions of Bod's Mayhem Hour, its staff, affiliates, or sponsors. Parental discretion is advised. Welcome to Bod's Mayhem Hour. This is Chris of Lord Dying, and you're listening to Bod's Mayhem Hour. Hey, everybody. Welcome to Bod's Mayhem Hour. I'm your host, John the Bod, a.k.a. the Bod Father. And as always, I bring you guys and gals awesome interviews. Today, it's an honor and privilege to welcome Chris Evans of Lord Dying. Lord Dying has released their new album entitled Clandestine Transistence via MNRK Heavy. Also, check out singles I Am Nothing, I Am Everything, The Endless Road Home, and universe is weeping we're gonna to talk to chris about all this good stuff what's going on chris and how you doing my man i'm good how are you doing great doing great you're actually my first interview of 2024 so we're kicking off the year really good right now nice how excited are you guys to have this new album entitled clandestine transistence via mark heavy out right now this is the second part of the trilogy but yeah we're really excited to have it out and uh yeah we're really excited about it Real happy with uh, how it turned out. In 2019, the band delivered Mysterium Trimdom, and Curring declared the record a prog metal masterpiece. When you guys are seeing this coming out from Caring, what what was your thoughts on this, seeing this, man, from that album? Oh, that's crazy. Yeah, I mean, we are big fans of prog metal masterpieces, so uh, I don't know if I'd consider it one, but I, I... we aim to make them for sure. So it's awesome that somebody would say that. What has adding Alyssa, former bassist for Eight Bells, and Kevin Swartz, drummer of TS, brought to this band? And what have they added that may have been missing, possibly, if anything? Well, Alyssa has added awesome backup vocals that we've never had. You know, it's cool to have like the the higher register backup vocals in the songs. That's been fun to experiment with. And uh, Kevin adds crazy, extreme metal drumming. And he's extremely tight, awesome drummer, and total pleasure to play with. We'll add blast beats and all that in our music before, so it's been really cool to mess with that. Have they kind of added like a new fire for the rest of you all uh, to like say, hey, look, we need to be on our game. We need to step it up a little bit. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Creating new songs. Did it breathe life back into the band as far as like, you know, completing this new album and moving on as Lord Dying? Has it gave you a new sense of... Hey, we're going in the right direction now. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. We're um, super happy with this album. I mean, usually when we finish an album, I just kind of hear what I don't like about it. And oh, I could have done this better. I should have put that part somewhere else, whatever. And this one, I, I listen back and I'm like, I'm pretty proud of it. I like it. I think it's cool. <laughs> <laughs> let's keep, let's write some more. Yeah. And you know, you could be your own worst enemy and be like, I don't want to hear this shit. And then like you find this you're like, hey, hmm, this ain't too shabby. <laughs> yeah, I not listen to our first three albums. I I can't do it. And I haven't got there with this one yet. I still I still enjoy popping it in. On these last three albums, do you go back and you go, oh, we need to change so much. Will we ever see remastered versions or you just don't want to go back down that road again? <laughs> well, I don't know we'd like re-record them or anything, but uh it'd be awesome to repress them for sure. I think I think all the vinyl of all three albums is out of print. So it'd be cool to repress them for sure. How's the fans feedback been on the release of these new singles? I am nothing. I'm everything. The endless wrote home and the universe is weeping. What have you been seeing, man? It's kind of fueled your guys fire now with this album and these releases. Yeah. I mean, uh, overwhelmingly positive stuff better than I had expected to see. So it's really, really exciting. Yeah. The Endless Road Home. This song is dedicated to all the road dogs, travelers, bands, crew, people that make tours happen, people that go to shows uh, and general rabbler, rousers. But, you know, we salute you. That's what you guys were saying. Is this your version of ACDCs for those about to rock? Because when I read that, I was like, hmm, this is like ACDCs about, you know, for those about to rock. We salute you. 
that's certainly that's certainly a good way to interpret it for sure did the band add anything differently on this album than what fans are accustomed to hearing from lord dying chris if anything possibly yeah maybe um we're certainly not just playing straight up like sludge metal anymore so it, it goes anywhere from like space rock to death metal to alternative rock <laughs> it's all over the place so there's even some like funky guitar riffs in there so uh, yeah i think there's some surprises for sure what led the track i am nothing i'm everything to, to be that first song released off the album what was it for you all that said that's got to go out first compared to anything else that was on it i don't i don't know what what exactly about it but everybody was like that's that's my favorite <laughs> after we uh demoed it really and uh that just kind of stuck with everybody like it was just Everybody knew that would be the first single. Any tracks standing out more to you than any right now on this album? I know it's your guy's baby. I understand it. And you're one of the founding members, but any tracks standing out more to you? Well, lately, uh, we, we're we playing a a record release show on Saturday. So it'll be the first time we've played a lot of these songs. So we've been like rehearsing a lot of them. And uh, Unto Becoming has been a real fun one for everybody. It's been it's super hard. And it's been taking a long time to get playing it well for everybody. And uh, I don't know, that one's been like a real, real fun one for everybody. So it's in my head every morning when I wake up. <laughs> <laughs> was there a track for the album that totally ended up sounding different than what I was intended to? Was there one that kept changing or no? Not exactly. Not any one track, really. They were pretty much, we played. Yeah, I don't think we changed any structures or anything in the studio, but on the whole, it did come out different than we could have imagined just because Kurt Ballou has such a, a style. And so we love albums Kurt Ballou's recorded, but I honestly couldn't imagine what we sounded like through the Kurt Ballou filter till I heard it. <laughs> and I love it, but it definitely sounded different than the demos, of course, but in a, in a, in a really good way. Now working with Kurt Ballou, did he get something out of you guys that maybe somebody else might not have gotten working with possibly? Yeah, I'm sure. I mean, he he can be a little hard on you and push you pretty hard. So it got us playing cleaner and tighter and he had good good ideas, stuff like that. Yeah, for sure. Chris, any songs that did not make this full length that we could see on another album or maybe even an EP down the road or just a standoff single possibly? Well, all of the songs we like completed were on while writing for this album were written, but there's always those like half songs laying around that we might resurrect and finish sometime. Oh yeah, for sure. Yeah. Is the track listing placement important for your guys album and EP releases or does it matter for you all at this point? Oh yeah. Especially on this one and the last one being that they're uh, concept records. Um, so lyrically they tell a story start to finish. So there's definitely an order and then, you want the music to sort of build and climax and all that as a whole. So yeah, the painstaking discussions of figuring out track orders takes a while. <laughs> so are you, are you guys going to be done with the concept albums after the third one? Or let's talk about it a little bit. Are you guys wanting to just take a break then dive into it again or no? Time will tell. Who knows where, where our heads will be at then. I love, I love doing the concept records. It just makes it like less just a collection of jams and more of like you, you wrote a book or whatever, you know, ah. big, big, big story, you know, maybe we'll be burned out on that after we do another one. So who knows? <laughs> a lot of bands, man, they, they stay traditional. They'd never go the concept, but they always in the back of their mind, they want to do one. Um, I think <laughs> I'm like you, it's like a book. I mean, it's gotta be cool to actually create one and see it come to life. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And it helps, you know, then you can be like, well, these songs sound really similar, but that's okay because it's all part of the concept, man. <laughs> <laughs> that's true. That is very true. That is very true. Yeah. What's the growth musically you've seen from yourselves working on this album that impresses you the most moving forward as a band? Yeah. Um, I'd say for me personally, it's guitar playing because I've been working harder at that the last few years but as a band i would say uh well i guess me and eric at least since we write the music that just songwriting in general has always been such a a mystery mysterious thing and something that you know there's no real code to break but I, as time goes on you get better and better at it and i feel like we're you know structurally putting songs together 
better and more interesting. And yeah, I'd say that I see a lot of growth in that area. Now, this is a really cool album out that you guys have on this album. Who did the artwork for this album? A guy named Alex Ricefar. Working with him, did he get exactly what you guys wanted or did you have to go back and forth for a little bit? Well, there was no back and forth and we didn't even tell him exactly what to paint. We just said, it's the second part of a trilogy. We want to tie in some of the first album ideas and here's the lyrics to this album and the music and go to town. And he sent that back and we were just like, that's it. That's amazing. (laughs) He did a great job. Chris, if you could write an album equivalent to your favorite band's album, which album would that be? Gosh, off the top of my head, I'd say something like The Downward Spiral by Nine Inch Nails. Oh, okay. Okay. (laughs) All right. That's a concept record. Very dark. I love it. That's, That's fair. That's fair. What's been your most memorable show that the band has been a part of that you still can't believe to this day that you were? Or has that happened yet for you? Gosh, I can't think of like a single show, but like shortly after we had started as a band and put out our first record, we got to tour two months in Europe opening for Red Fang with every soul show sold out. And that was that was overwhelming and amazing. And, you know, nothing's come close to that since. So that definitely sticks out in the history of Lord Dang. Red, Red Fang is one of those bands where you just have to like stop and be like, oh, I got to listen to this now. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Oh my God, they're they're fucking awesome, and I still say they're still underrated, and I don't get it. Yeah, yeah, I agree. It should be in everybody's uh, playlist right now. Go go get it. I don't care what fucking song, just go get it. By anything <laughs> doesn't matter. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Chris, if you could be a member in an iconic band and play one of their legendary shows, which band would it be, and what show possibly? Oh God, I can't, I don't know of a certain show, but uh, Led Zeppelin, man. (laughs) I wish I could go back in time and at least see one of those shows in their heyday. If you could be a member in that band, who who would you want to be? Jimmy Page, of course. Oh, there you go. Although John Bonham, pretty cool too. I would love to be able to drum like him. He's like the animal of the the music industry, man, of rock back in the day. Every time I watch the Muppets and see animals, I was like, that's John Bonham. Yeah. <laughs> All right, Chris, how can folks stay in touch with Lord Dying by this new album? Keep in touch with all you guys. How can they do that, sir? Oh, man, come to the shows, social media. That, that'd be it. <laughs> Everybody, thank you so much for watching the podcast this evening with Chris Evans of Lord Dying. Please get out and check out their new album, Clandestine Transcendence. Yeah, uh, MNRK Heavy. Give this band a fair shot. They've got some amazing music. I don't care if it's a trilogy, if it's just a regular standard album, give this band a fair shot because they are the the breath of fresh air that a lot of metal and doom out there needs right now. So please check them out. So Chris, man, thank you for doing the interview, and I wish you guys nothing but the best of luck. Thank you. Thanks for having me. to Bud's Mayhem Hour. Follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram.